COVID-19 is rising exponentially and the pattern of spread seen across Europe and the USA seems to be following a similar trajectory to what we have seen in Italy. Governments have talked of herd immunity, P0 values, critical care capacity and of the need to flatten the curve. We've seen tidy graphical illustrations of a peaked curve, a flattened curve and a hospital capacity line. But I think these have looked a little bit suspicious. We never see any numbers along the y-axis. Are these graphs representative of any kind of reality? Or are they wishful thinking, with politicians shirking away from shining a light on the stark reality of a mass tragedy that may be likely to unfold? I decided to run my own numbers to try and test these government illustrations. The purpose of my video is to help our public consciousness and to compel more to take action now in their personal choices to try and prevent thousands of unnecessary deaths. I am not a doctor, I am not an epidemiologist or a professional statistician, but I can use a spreadsheet and I can apply a bit of critical thinking and I can ask questions. First we need to understand what is meant by herd immunity. Epidemiologists talk of viruses having an R0 value. Put simply, this means the number of people a carrier will infect on average. COVID-19 is thought to have a value of a little over 2.5. Therefore, an average person might infect, say, three other people for simplicity. They will then each infect three more, and so on. Herd immunity is reached if a certain proportion of the population is immune from the infection. This proportion is based on the R0 value. For COVID-19, it would require at least 60% of the population to be immune. So two in every three people would be immune from the virus because they have already had it and so have an immune system that is able to repel any attempt at reinfection. Herd immunity then follows. The blue dots now represent people who are immune. An infected person is now only able to infect, on average, one other person. In turn, they will, on average, only go on to infect one other. The chain of transmission will therefore likely break before long when someone in the chain happens only to encounter immune people. Notice that the black dots that are left have benefited from herd immunity. To reach this stage, we therefore require about 60% of the population to have had the virus and to have built an immunity to it. Herd immunity is simply an inevitable end stage of a virus that has been successful at infecting a connected population where no vaccine exists. At this point the virus is no longer able to sustain itself and will die out unless it has managed to mutate into an altered form able to reinfect people again. Let's now look at what shape the 60% might take in terms of when they get the virus. The shape is purely dependent on the ease with which it is able to infect people and the effectiveness of the measures society might take to dampen that rate with societal interventions. In this illustration we have a rapid infection curve. The individuals that make up the curve all add up to the 60% of the UK population that we need for herd immunity. So we have roughly 40 million people who will need to be infected at some point. If social distancing and lockdowns are partially successful, we may see a flatter curve like this. Again, the people under this curve also add up to the 40 million. We have simply spaced out their dates of infection through social distancing. We can also depict a possibility where a much more strict lockdown is adhered to. This spreads the 40 million out across a far longer time frame. So, if these are some examples of the possible spreads of the infection across the population, what does it mean for the ability of our healthcare system to cope? For this we need to make an assumption for the proportion of infected people that will need hospital treatment. And of these, we are really interested in the proportion that will require a respirator to survive. For the critically ill, a respirator enables them to survive a little longer, buying valuable time for their immune system to hopefully control the virus and begin to recover. A reputable newspaper reported on the 18th of March the findings of an analysis carried out by Imperial College. This found that around 5% of the UK population are expected to require hospital treatment and a third of those will need intensive care requiring a respirator. 
This equates to around 2.5% of our 40 million people requiring a respirator. I've used an optimistic assumption of 2%. I've also assumed that those requiring a respirator will only need it for seven days, whereas Imperial College stated that it's more like 10 days. So let's see what this means for our three infection curve patterns and the critical care patients that will need a respirator. Here are the respirator needs of those requiring them under the first curve where we have failed to control cross-infection in the population. Let's insert a marker to represent the number of ventilators we have. My marker here is at around 6,000 respirators, but recently the figure has risen by a couple of thousand from freeing up those in operation theatres and requisitioning military hardware and private sector facilities. Now let's plot the respirator needs from the other two curves. With a severely flattened curve, we will need around 15,000 respirators by late April. Our medium curve requires around 33,000 at its peak in June, and our uncontrolled curve needs a massive 70,000 in the first half of May. This means that 70,000 new people per week will need a respirator. Based on my 6,000 respirators in the NHS, which is slightly out of date, this results in a shortfall of 9,000 under the flat curve, 27,000 for our medium curve and an ominous 66,000 shortfall in our uncontrolled curve. Just to be clear, the majority of these acutely sick patients will die without that respirator. That is 66,000 deaths per week at its peak. Looking at actual numbers therefore reveals a dramatic emergency in respirator shortages. This is alarming. By adding some figures to the messages we've had about health service capacity worries, we see the true scale of the predicament we're in. If this worries you, please use the information to drive you to adhere strictly to the government's instructions on social distancing. Please share this video to help others to understand our plight. Maybe they will decide not to huddle up in a queue outside supermarkets. Maybe they will keep away from others if they have just mild symptoms. Maybe they will take responsible actions to protect the elderly, the vulnerable, and the unlucky thousands of younger age groups who will also need a respirator. Thank you for watching and please take care.